going to the edge and throwing yourself off, hurtling towards the ground at 100 miles an hour, at the last moment, saving yourself. Leaping from buildings, antennae, spans, and earth. Base jumping has been around for less than 20 years, and it's probably the most dangerous of extreme sports. I'm heading for Tony's tent! Whoa. Whoa! Permitted in some countries, in Britain, base jumping remains an underground activity. Ooh. Conducted at secret locations, under cover of darkness, Base jumping isn't a spectator sport. Shot over one long mad summer, this film catches a rare glimpse of Britain's clandestine base scene. A community of high risk takers who never make the news, except when something goes wrong. And then three, two, one, see ya. Up and out. Bankers jump with builders and salesmen, all are skydivers chasing the biggest rush. Imagine there's a wall there. With less than 100 active jumpers in the UK, finding a teacher willing to take you on may take years. Rob, by day, a scaffolder, is guiding his new student Dave through the essentials of a safe exit. Dave is a skydiving instructor. In base, he's a novice. Have another go. I'm going to pilot you assist Dave off. All he has to do is climb over the rail, get a nice body position, a nice exit, nice clean exit off. That's all he's got to do. He hasn't got to think about pulling the parachute or anything. I'm holding his bridle line, I'm holding his pilot chute. Three, two, one, see ya. That's better, that's better. It's easier on the floor than it is in the air because your mind's racing at two million miles an hour once you're up there. You, you forget things, you get a bit slack for your first time. You're scared. I mean, anybody who says they're not scared on their first base jump, as far as I'm concerned, is a liar. Two, one, see ya. Checked. Rob's regular base jumping partner John is also on the antenna tonight. I'm not big into teaching no more at all. Apart from it. It's just a, it's a big responsibility. Massive responsibility. There's absolute fantastic rewards, but you know, if they go wrong, there's all type of downside. If uh, with every up there's a down, isn't there? So I mean and, and they're big downs, not small downs. So if it all went wrong, it'll go wrong. Pete's on pretty big. OK, Dave, turn around again, mate. Have a good one. Be safe. Just think, look up. I know when you're looking at the floor, look up. Nice, positive exit. You've done it all before, apart from the first three seconds, yeah? Be safe, and I'll see you on the floor. John? Well, my words are, just go and have fun, really. Yeah. You know, this is what it's all John. about. Just go over there, be really confident, and we're going to be behind you. OK. All right. Do you want a minute to yourself, or are you all right to go? Yeah. All right. Well, okay. I'll check the bottom of the pilot shoot. OK. Right. In your own time, Dave, when you're ready. Okay. Walk out. Sideways, mate. That's yeah. it. Come back a little bit. Come, come back. That's it. So you give yourself plenty of room to get over. OK. Remember, if you fall, get your shoulders straight. Looking good, ready to go. In your own time, Dave. Up and out. Remember to look up. I don't want to see you looking at the floor. Three, two, one, see ya. Hi, <laughs> 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 yeah. oh, mate. Did you see that arch? I've never seen an arch like that. He banged it out big time. He done all right. He done all right. Say me goodbyes here then. All right, Slick. Sure. See you in a little while. I'll give you a shout. All right, Brody. I'll see you in a text. See you in a, see you in a little while. This is a good thing. Once some students get off, you climb to the top so much easier. See you in a tip, mate. Yep. A lonely, lonely slot. That's no boogeyman up here. Three, two, one. See ya.
to the streets and beyond, mate. To the streets and beyond. <laughs> In base, the short drops are the most dangerous. If something goes wrong, there's no time to react. Cheddar Gorge is a stuff of legend. Simon Jakeman, godfather of British base, nearly ended it all on these craggy cliffs. For his attempt, John has enlisted the help of Greg, an Australian expert. Greg, that is 270 yeah. to... Mate, that, is, that is luckily 200 feet, I'll tell you now. How can he get it so wrong? How can he right. say, right, how can he put it in print? It's 360. Well, it was in the days before they really know what they're talking about. Well, it's definitely not more than 220 feet. 250. Oh, tell a lie, yeah, tell a lie, it's not. I would say 250. No. Oh, well, this is all right, but you don't want to land over there. No, come well, and have a look, come and have a look. Let me show you something from what you don't see from the top. Where are you thinking of landing over the back here? Just here. Elliot landed up here, last one. I'm landing down there, mate. I'm landing on the road. Oh. John, land on the road, mate. What do you think? Shut up. Yeah, it's not the best looking object I've ever jumped. Um, no, it's not a nice object at all. It looks horrible all the way down. John reckons if you chuck a stone off the top, that the stone will fall straight down. It doesn't look like that from here. But you can't tell until you get to the top, so we'll go up tomorrow morning uh, and jump it. No? Not for you. No. No. Not with my near canopy. No. Each to their own, mate. Each to their own. Yeah, we'll, we'll have a go tomorrow. Have a bit of fun. Scare ourselves a little bit. Base jumping, you go against everyone's taboo, don't you? You go against what Mother told you not to do. Don't go too close to the edge. Please don't come back. It stems from childhood. And you build these fear levels up without you even knowing about them. Now, if you didn't know what fear was, going to the edge would not be a problem. Well, it's one of those good vibe mornings, isn't it? You do get to a point where you think, I've accepted what I'm going to do. You shut off to who's around you and you kind of go inward. As much as you're aware to who's around you and what's going on and everyone's kitting up and checking up, but you're on your own. Everyone's on their own when they're up there. Who's that standing on the road right where the planning area is? That's me showing the... Can you tell me to get out of the way? Oh, Mick, get out of the way! And then just drop it. No, don't drop it. You've got to rob it like you're jumping. Mm -hmm. just, just rob it, but don't okay, I'll accelerate there. it, you know what I mean? Counting how long it takes a rock to fall should be a reliable measurement of height. A little bit harder. Impacted on the first ledge. It doesn't look any as bad as it does from the bottom. Here we go. Usually I love the sound of birds in the morning, but not today. today. Probably the most dangerous part of this jump is the chance of a bird strike. There's probably about 30 or 40 birds flying around the face. <laughs> and they haven't got eyes on the top of their head. How are you feeling this morning? <laughs> pretty good, mate. Pretty good. A bit tired. But, yeah, pretty good. It's that moment where you've totally accepted what you're going to do. And it's that moment of, I don't know, it's total calm or... You forget about all your family or you forget, you forget about everything. It's just this, this void, this empty void. In this empty void, you've got this moment where you feel like I accept whatever I do now and I have no regrets whatever I do now. If you get off and a bird comes and you see a bird, just ignore it. If it hits you, it hits you. Don't tip your shoulders or do anything to not hit it. I'd rather hit a bird and cop a broken nose and yeah. you know, and hit a man. Be safe on the floor, floor yeah? Right. Ugly dugly. Wanna tell them we're going? If I have an accident after I go off now, 
I will not look back in months to come and say, why did I do it? Who's going first, John? Rob. Rob's going up, he's going first. I've got a one minute call there. 30 seconds. 30 seconds. Clear? Yep. Clear, mate. Go home, mate. We'll go home, mate. We'll go home. Three. Two. One. See ya. Good. Yep. Now the leap. It just seems that your brain just goes into this sort of like automatic pilot. You know what to do. John's coming off next. Okay. Three, two, pull. It seems like a drill, but it seems like a reality world and all. When you go off, for that one second, it Three, seems like a reality world. One, see ya. It's like a, a roller coaster ride, really, of emotions. But only in your mind, from the person behind or from the person on the ground, it seems like one, two, three, four, five, opened his parachute. But from the person doing it, I can tell you everyone has some very weird emotions when they jump off. And in three seconds, you've got life. Buildings are the most terrifying objects for base jumpers. Sheer walls and erratic wind patterns mean you're only ever seconds from impact. Jesus, baby. There's too much overhang on them trees, mate. When I was walking down here, them trees, they're all overhang. Oh, I mean, yeah. Even to put it in a road, you're going to have trouble because look how far the trees oh, overhang no, the road. I'll be dropping down, canopy opening. I'll be turning right and then setting up left. Centre of that grass, I will be trying to put it down. I'll be flying over the top of that small little tree at the bottom and then landing it there. Mm. But sure. we've all got different routes of landing yeah. it. The way that I'm going to go is if I get off over here, I'll be landing smack bang in the middle of there. Yeah, I wouldn't, yeah I, I, undoubtedly. No, no matter, no matter what, well, whatever way the wind's going, left or right, the only way I can see this jump going is off, set yourself up, and land. Just land it, basically. Yeah. So this really gives you a really good view. We know what it looks like now. You can feel the boys in straight away. The lounge lizard look is a good disguise. Rob and John don't want to alert hotel security. There's already been one fatal jump from the Park Lane Hilton. It's, it's, it's going to be open. It's a fire exit. It's got to be open. It's got to be open. So all it is is everybody sorted here. Everybody checked, everybody go, everybody's ready. Pilot shoots in the end, bridles tucked away, everything ready to go. Okay, boys, exit order sorted. First person off, out, opens the door. Last person shuts the door. Right, yeah. So we can't do it now, because if I open them doors now, we're going no, to be we're gonna have to run down. We're not even going to get a chance to get to the bottom of the no, door. No, she's going to be out straight yeah. away. It's yeah. going to come up and confuse So we need to be doing it late at night or early in the morning. When well, the, five o'clock in the morning. When the, bars, when the top bar's closed, because there's no one up here. If, even if there's a the people about, there's two cubicles. If there's four or five of us, we need to get in the cubicles, get everything sorted, sorted. in the cubicles, straight out, straight up, straight out. I like it. It doesn't matter what floor we're on. It really doesn't. We, it, 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 well, yeah, but at five o'clock in the morning, there ain't going to be no, uh, no one around anyway. So all we need to do is... The plan is to jump in the early hours with a crew on the ground holding up traffic, keeping the public out of danger. You, Alan, me, or whoever, whatever the scenario is, we need to, we need to sort this out. Because otherwise we're going to be a bit... All right, yeah. mate, yeah. how are you? Yeah, we're going to walk. Nice out. Right, we're going to walk. Right, I'm going to... You're, you're going to just stand there, like yeah, you do. Yeah, I'm going to do nothing. <laughs> Cross the road. Right, me and you. Have John, I'll knock you over that fence yeah. and no, you're we're not having a fucking drink. Me. <laughs> John, I'm telling you. I'll come out for a drink with me, Rob. Well, you, no, Rob, you know not. I'd never leave you with a broken leg, would I? No. 
No, you would. If I broke my leg here, you'd leave me. I wouldn't. John, I'm you, I don't I is not coming out for a drink with you, my friend. Because oh, I, I know it's going to get involved in a lot more than a <laughs> fucking drink. A couple of beers. No. No, John, I'm not getting involved, man. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> 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 If you're going to go in, you want to... Don't know. touch me, that fucking <laughs> low! I've not done a building before. This will be my B. This will stand for B for building or B for busted. Either one, I'm going to do it and walk away, or two, I'm going to do it and get caught. So, it, it's, it's a nice building. It's, it's got a nice curve on it. You can jump away from it. You've got a nice landing area. You can land, get your stuff in the bag as quick as you can, and you're off. You're gone. I mean, at the top we'll of jump this, right, and we'll come back in a day or two days or three days and we'll sit here and we'll and have a love. drink, we'll have a couple of bottles of beer and we'll have a, have a fag and we'll just sit here and we'll just laugh and we'll say, yeah, we've done or, it. Or, the, you know, the worst scenario, depending. we'll come back here and we'll mourn for the dead. And, uh, oh, mourn yeah. for the dead, that yeah. sounds bollocks, but... It is. It is uh, true. Um, it is so true. true. Um, one of us can. One of us can go in so easy on this building. It's a funny thing. You, you just two on the edge. You just climb up on the edge, and I'm gonna say I'd, I'd never cuddle a bloke in, in a million years. But when I'm on the edge, I'll have a little cuddle with John and a little cuddle with Greg and Alan and all the boys, and it's like, yeah, you know, because it could be the last reality. time. It's it could reality. be the last time that we actually say, see you later, mate. Have a good one. And for me, if I if I say up, up to someone and say, you know, John, have a good one, son, and I don't see him, I've said my I've said my yeah, last well, I, I, I can I, I can joke on the ground, but I you can, can you can all sit you. here and laugh, and everybody's at home gives but it up. Uh, uh, you're the bad. last guy on the building. But, I mean, can you imagine just giving it? Oh yeah, right, mate. Yeah, see you later. Have a good one. Jump off. There and he goes in, and you haven't said you haven't see said ya. nothing. You haven't embraced him. You haven't done nothing to him, uh, and then he's gone. And that, that would be the worst thing. It's like your dad dying and you don't get to say goodbye, goodbye to him. Leaping from the Empress building means that Sean has successfully jumped all four objects in base. It's a rite of passage he'll never forget. Empress, I bit off a little bit more than I could chew there, uh, as far as base jumping in terms go. I think it's quite what you call a hardcore object. That's the closest I've come to killing myself in a long time. Sean isn't your average travelling salesman. I've been to quite a few places all over the world. And, you know, scuba diving, whitewater rafting, um, skydiving, you know, canoeing, rock climbing. I've had a go at pretty much most things. You know, I see people that, you know, live their day-to-day -day life and they, they spend eight or nine hours in bed. Christ, you know, you sleep 30% of your life. There's so much going on outside, you know, you need to be out there doing some stuff. I base jump to have some control over, over something in my life. You know, we're sitting in a car now that's got six or seven airbags in it. Um, it's got speed limiters, it's got, you know, side impact, protection bars. You go to McDonald's and it'll say, beware the coffee in this cup may be hot and it could burn you. Now, what kind of mindless people are we, you know, being turned into? All this kind of crap that we're getting shoved down our throat day in, day out to make the world a safer place, I'm giving it one in the eye. When I climb an object with my parachute on my back and make the informed choice to jump, I'm giving that two fingers, basically.
at some stage in their lives, all base jumpers make the pilgrimage to Norway. The object of their desire is Kirag, a sheer rock face taller than any mountain in Britain. It's massive, a kilometer high granite wall. Base is legal here, and to jumpers the world over, it's Nirvana. It's beautiful. Never drink better than that. Terry is a leading movie stunt coordinator. Alan, a parachute instructor. Both are trained skydivers, learning how to base jump. <laughs> Whose idea was this, Hewitt? <laughs> I don't like heights. <laughs> God's holding you, mate. Formerly SAS, Terry is a romantic idealist who knows no fear. I love it. I feel so at home up here. I just don't quite know why it's taken me so long to get here. I've never been here before, and really I've been thinking about it probably all my life. Everything is in your mind, you know? I mean, like, this is an edge. Over there is death. Over here is life. And as if, you know, provided you have confidence that, you know, you're not ready for that yet. Um, but, you know, I mean, we're all fascinated by it. And I certainly know I am. I know people are different. Some people, you know, walk that tightrope in, in different ways. Some people push it to extremes. Um, but I ha as I was trying to explain to you on the physical side of things, I actually have uh, no problem with walking inches from here because I just have confidence in, in the fact that right at this moment, I'm not going to go over. I won't go over until my equipment, which I trust completely, is on my back. You all right, mate? Yep, ready to go. Alan and Terry have teamed up with a party of Brits taking their first base jumping course. Lasse, their tutor, instructs the group in correct exit procedures from the edge. On the edge. I have a bad knee. Okay, so that's why I don't want to be too many. Yeah. 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 Lasser turns downward momentum into forward speed, tracking away from the cliff, finally opening his parachute just 300 feet above the ground. Oh, yes, <coughs> Course completed, the Norwegians check out. Newcomer Sean is left in charge of the Brits. Don't you guess how too well practiced? <laughs> I'm walking down the exit point now. Max is going to follow me down. Uh, he's going to be first off. I'm going to put all the singletons off, then the two-way with the smoke. And then Alan is going to get off exit point six, and that should be us. Yeah, Roger that. We're ready to accept you whenever. Three, two, one, see ya! Terry's next up. Yeah. Jumpers watch and video each other all the time. It's part of the learning process. Three, two, one. See if you people do uh, a few more exits first. That was a uh, very close call. Very, very, very close. 
What happened with the opening? My foot slipped just as I took off the top. It wasn't the opening, no, the opening was fine. The opening was, was okay. I was, I was literally fighting to get away from the cliffside all the time. Uh, and I must have missed, you know, the ledge? Yeah. I missed that ledge by inches. <sighs> Not clever, <laughs> but I'm still here. I forgot to say I'll be back, you see, if I'd have, if I'd have said that, it'd be all okay. <laughs> Sean leads three. a three-way jump. The big buzz is being the last person to open your parachute. It's the leader's privilege, if he can face it. There's only one jumper still waiting, Terry's friend, Alan. I'm the last man at the top of the hill. They've all gone. It's very fucking lonely. Okay, here goes. Ready. Three, two, one. Going. Here goes nothing. One thousand. Ah. That's a dog's bollocks. That is the dog's bollocks. Fuck it is. There are hundreds of right reasons, but to look cool in front of other people, that is 100% the wrong reason. Because to risk your life to look to look cool for other people and I, I not get paid for it, basically, is that's that's stupid. You know, that's a, that's the wrong way to go about it. Yeah, you tell it is a stuntman, Christ. Yeah, that's the last thing you do, look cool. Yeah, it's got to be a simple right like, reason, the fact that you want the challenge. You want to do it, you want the adrenaline rush, you want the challenge, and uh, you feel skilled enough to go ahead and give it a go. Yeah. I don't know how right re many right reasons it can be. Yeah, you know, this whole base only things about survival, you know, I'm not that. Uh... But it is all that you say about survival, if you were totally concerned about survival, well, I think, like any of us, if we were concerned totally about survival, we wouldn't be here in the first place. It is about survival, but at, but your kind of survival, or my kind of survival, yeah. anyway. Yeah. I think we've all had our conversations with a grim reaper. Yeah. And we, we keep having those conversations, well, I do, anyway, but it's... Uh, Been there a few times. Yeah, it, 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 and you actually quite enjoy the conversations as long as I don't have to meet him face-to-face -face just yeah. yet. Yeah. So that's the way I, I sum it up, you know. I hope he's listening. <laughs> <laughs> there has to be a motivation why certain of us, and I think it is, it's the adrenaline you get, the fact that you're no longer, um, you're no longer really afraid, virtually, of, of, of anything, including the ultimate possibility from this sport. And there's very few sports that would put you in the same position, this particular kind of sport, I do actually find almost like therapeutic. It's really bizarre to, you know. It's not like that that first, that that's, that jump today. Yeah. You know, it it did not in one for one sort of second did it put me off. All I wanted to do was no, to get up there. No, 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 sure. It's you know, but uh, I know what you're saying about therapeutic as well because you kind of after you've jumped, you you kind of sit down and you've got this warm feeling and you feel really calm and you just want to sit there and have a cup of tea and it's lovely. Yeah. 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 Physical risk is a who knows, maybe it's a way of getting rid of frustration. You know, maybe it's an artistry that you never 
given scope to or whatever, I don't know. Because it is, you, you watch the more experienced people doing this. I am gobsmacked, not a, the extra kind of a bravery or anything like that, but it's just how they can perfect something which is already intrinsically incredibly dangerous and, and difficult. It's the human spirit, it's the pilgrim, I suppose. It's something like that. that some will go that little bit further all the time. I mean, we're all limit pushers, I think. There I am, sat on the edge of a cliff, just about to film Terry go off number seven. And I hate heights, I don't mind jumping off it, but I hate looking over the edge. There's a man preparing, all on his tod. Good one, Terry. A lonely sight. Nobody else around. This is Terry going off exit point seven, moving down to the little ledge. Oh, nice dive, Terry. On Terry's eighth jump from Kirag, he struck the cliff. Almost certainly injured, he still managed to land his parachute on a high ledge. But 12 hours later, a rescue team still hadn't got to him. His body was found at the bottom of the cliff. It seems he died trying to rescue himself using the reserve parachute from his skydiving rig. Fearless to the last. Headcams and digital video mean that every jump is preserved forever. Yeah. Normally for me it's just the actual jump, but getting onto the ladder, climbing this ladder, no, no cage on it, no, no safety equipment of any type apart from a parachute. Is that you breathing or is that wind? No, uh, it's wind. No, I don't breathe that heavy. Hey, fire, mate. Fast. Everybody bar one person I've spoken to about base jumping basically thinks that I'm off my head, I want to kill myself, you're on a death wish, blah, 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 blah. And I spoke to a bloke in work the other day, and he, for the first, and I, for the first time, he turned around and said, it's about living, and it is about living. Make sure you don't look up too much for this rust, mate. I can ex try and explain it as much as I want, and people just think, no, they won't listen. You know, we try and tell them it's a sport, they think we're just one or two people in the country that are just doing this ludicrously mad, crazy, zany sport. Side. <laughs> just climbing over an arm rail or getting onto the edge, you get that two or three seconds of that. It's like, oh, what am I doing up here? And then suddenly, once your head starts saying that, something else says in your head, because I love it, because it's great, because it's about enjoying myself and just the best thing I've ever done. I'll intend to be base jumping for the next 20 years, 30 years. I intend to pack up base jumping when I'm too old to climb an object. Okay, mate. Classic one from Greg here. Fuck me. <laughs> and I love everything about the sport, the bond that we make with like Greg and everybody, John, all the boys. What? That doesn't give you vertigo, I don't know what the fuck with. I just can't get enough of everything that we do. It's just a truly amazing feeling. Sense. It is a bit crazy, but we, we cut the wrist down. I mean, we always go and walk the landing area, we always look at the winds, we, we're always on top of the situation. And I know people just 
Yeah, they still won't believe me at the end of, end of this program. Go to work tomorrow and say, you see them bunch of bloody lunatics on, on the TV. You're know, obviously going to be dead in a couple of years. Oh, 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 oh mate. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, mate. That was a mission and a half. I'll tell you what, that is one of the hardest, hardcore bass jumps you can ever do. When we're out with the boys and we're having a beer or something and someone will start talking about, you know, I'll, I'll remember these jumps as, even if I didn't have video. I, I don't ever lose the feeling. And I think um, most of the people that I know don't. Just thinking about it 24-7, basically. OK. OK. Three, two, one, see ya. <laughs> Fuck me. Ooh. Monday night, I had a strike, which is like the first strike of my career so far. The left-hand side of my canopy actually hit the leg of the antenna and uh, smacked me into a, a bit of steel work. Um, I thought I could make it over at one stage. Um, I lifted my leg up, legs up as high as I could, but um, I just couldn't make it. It slammed me into the steel work. I slammed my, le my uh, left leg and my right arm. With my leg, it looks a lot, it, it feels a lot worse than it looks, but I can assure you it is very, very painful. But you might be able to see this little bit of stuff here. Basically, just pump me, me fire right up. And I'm not too sure. I'm not too sure how I got the graze on the back of my leg. Can't exactly remember. I feel like an old man. For Rob's dad, the risks in base jumping are just too much. No, I don't, I don't like it. I think it's too dangerous. What I'm meant to do, I'll be even more unhappier if I'm not base jumping or doing something that I want to do. Why don't you just keep to the uh, parachute from the planes? I think I've got to the stage now where I can't actually stop base jumping because I've started it and, you know, I don't think that I will stop base jumping. Yeah, you know, I, I, I do try to take in consideration you and Mum's mum's faults, but as I say, I can't stop doing it for, for you and Mum. I mean, you should come down there one night and just see the way that we, we actually approach it. Oh, yeah, you want me to get me at it like now and I'll be out there <laughs> yeah. trying to jump. I know what you're saying with the bats. Oh, it's just the biggest... Biggest rush that I've ever, anything that I've ever done. And you know me, I've done the bits and bobs here and there, but it's just, the, it's just so good. But for me, it's also with the boys as well. I mean, the, the, the boys we're jumping with, the jumps that we're doing. Yeah, it'd be a good crowd, of geezers, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. I might be right in it, but. You've been, all of you all got a death wish, I think. Oh, I mean, you met Greg the other day. He says, you know, the boat's travelled around the world, he's got no t intentions of dying, and the same as no, me. No, no, it's just. It's because it's not socially accepted. Because, because people, because lawyers and doctors do rock climbing, and people are getting pulled off mountains left, right, and centre all through the summer, all through the winter, all over, all over the world. Yeah. But because it's seen as more socially accepted, because loads of people do it. Well, it's not illegal, is it? Well, nor is base jumping. Not yet. Has base jumping changed, Rob? Yeah, we've got a little bit more mature. I can say it's got a little bit more sensible <laughs> in it. Which is a uh, funny thing to say, but yeah, yes. Yeah. He's not um, as ratty as he used to be. He's, he's calmed down a lot through it. I'll, I've got to accept he's a man now and he's going to do his own thing. And it don't matter like, what I've got to do, stand up and have a fight with him, that ain't going to prove nothing. If I was doing it, I'm more likely to have the same attitude as And don't worry about anyone else, I'm enjoying what I'm doing. I can understand that side of him, what, he, what he's saying. You know, I don't agree with it. Because of the, the danger point right now, and I don't want to see him coming home in a box. He ain't going to know nothing about what other people, what he's left behind, and what other people are going through, the emotions they're going through. It's not going to affect him. But it's going to affect every, like, the family, it's going to affect. You know, brother, sisters, mother, father, like, their nan. They're the ones that are going to be affected, not him. So, for you, the benefits don't outweigh the risk. Yeah, that's right. You know, it's... Um, He's going to do it, no matter what we say, he's going to carry on. And, yeah, and that's the end of the story, like, you know, he's going to do it. Right, everyone out in the middle, yeah? Everyone make a circle. 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 Everyone make
The worldwide base tribe gather for a final fling in Norway, but the elements are not in their favor. That's it, sunshine tomorrow, guaranteed. John loses his balance, then his sense of direction as he falls through cloud. He delays opening his parachute to the last moment. His equipment fails and he's spun around to face the cliff. It's a close call. Here I fucking was. Here, Here I was. was. Here I was on me, on me ninth second. What size That's pilot shoot is that? Two inch, mate. And what sort of delay did you do on that, John? Ooh, ten seconds. <laughs> <laughs> Are you going to do it again? Ooh, no thank you. <laughs> It's gone down like Richard Branson's balloon, hasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Where was that part you made? The solidated rigging. Well, that's shite because no, no. it's got no fucking, no webbing no. running through the top of it at all. Lucky. Think you should get blind drunk tonight, mate. If you get your life gone. Yeah, it's one of the cats gone, that, mate. He's, uh, you've said that twice now <laughs> since I've known you. Go and buy around. We had a beer, John. I think you should all be buying this dead man a fucking drink. <laughs> See that? Dead that man is, walking. That is what your parts are supposed to look like. I'd throw that in the bin. That's hanging up on the wall, mate. The mountains are popular with local ramblers. Atop Smelvagen, the highest local peak, there's the added spice of watching the jumpers. For less experienced base jumpers, scrutiny is an added pressure. Yeah, like a Fuck! Fly that thing right, fly it! She's hit again. Yep. What, who went off? Who went off? Was it an American, Australian? What, what's going on? Who, who is it? A rescue jump is quickly arranged by more experienced jumpers. It's the last one to worry about that. Airway's the most important thing, guys. Mariah! Right, yeah, yeah I, I see some movement down there. I don't know if it's a canopy fluttering or if she's kind of moving a bit. We're just gonna get down there. Okay, right, it's a woman. It's a female. Yeah, it's a woman. She's unconscious and she's at the top of the talus there. It's a bad strike. I couldn't see it. But she dumped way earlier than, than she was planning on for whatever reason. That's it. You're good. Mariah has a miraculous escape. No broken bones, just cuts and bruises. She is a lucky, lucky girl. Two days later, someone's luck runs out on Smell Vegan. Steve, the guy is an English guy. No, he's, 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 he's a very experienced base jumper. Very experienced base jumper. And I can't imagine what went wrong. Times like this, I do feel for people that are stuck on the ledge. And there's people sitting back here in the bar looking at a rescue attempt. You feel helpless in a way. But in a way, you feel glad it's not yourself. What a delay time? Seven or eight. And you've got 180, you just went. It would not back off. some real funny winds it coming up. It would not there. back off, mate. It just, and it just slammed you. Slid and slammed. How many times? Yeah. How many times did you oh, hit the wall? A lot. Yeah. Oh, wait. Sorry. <laughs> Don't touch it, Steve. Uh, just leave it, Steve. God, I'm such a baby. Oh, nah. Steve's injuries are severe. Broken ribs, a dislocated shoulder, and a fractured pelvis. Always wear a helmet, guys, I tell you. Looked pretty bad, Steve, when you were going down that wall. Oh, it's horrific. Yeah, it's perfect. <laughs> it's the helplessness, you know? You just... Yeah. You try and you try, and there's nothing you can do. 
All right, guys, thanks, yeah. <laughs> Have a safe day tomorrow. <laughs> Death and injury have made it a bad summer for base. But tomorrow, it'll be jumping as normal. It's about 400 foot down, you see a ledge. So we're going to do about 12 second delay off. And then uh, open the canopy and head back to the campsite. Sounds good. And it might be four or five of us. Five would be good. Returning for the first time since Terry's death, Alan has teamed up with the British jumpers. Some wearing new safety equipment. Oh, must have picked up the wrong size helmet. <laughs> this helmet's got to come off in three, four. <laughs> Did you try it at first, John? Turns on. There's my light on. Yeah. Well, yeah. have a good one, mate. Everyone. Yeah. Just keep your hands in the middle. And and look the middle. out for this one, yeah. Keep the look out where. Yeah. Do you want? Be safe, be safe. Stay on the bar for a bit, yes? Yeah. Stay on the ground. Stay on the yeah. ground, boys. Right. And the camp will be right. okay. Camp now. Okay. Right. First time I've smelled vegan. And uh, same time as first five way. I'd only ever jumped by myself before. <laughs> to see the cliff rushing past and to look left and see four people next to you. It's like, wow. <laughs> it was good. It was very, very impressive. Being back after the last time I was here. Um, was uh, okay. I didn't know what to expect when I turned up. Um, even how people locally might uh, uh, view us and what we was doing. But um, and I looked at it when, well, basically last time I was here when Terry died. It was uh, uh, it, it was one of the worst feelings I've ever had. But once you get on with it and um, Terry's funeral was, was finished and done, it was like his views on life was a lot far greater than mine um, and I just look at you know you, you fall off a horse you get back onto it the saying's true in skydiving I've lost two mates skydiving um, and now one base jumping um, and it doesn't stop me parachuting so I don't think it's going to stop me base jumping if you ask my wife then um, the, the sort of lifestyle I lead she can't deal with it anymore um, which is why she sort of had enough uh, and wants a nine till five job and weekends off, but it's just not me. It's the danger that you feel safe with. It's like parachuting you feel safe with, base jumping you feel safe with. You don't feel you're pushing the edge too much, but you are getting enough to, to know that um, it's, a, it's a challenge and you want to you wanna succeed. Everything I do, it's got to be a certain amount of risk. I'm not saying that cockily, it's just just the way some people are. <laughs> well, uh, there we go, chaps. Uh, it's to uh, some sort of uh, salvageable week. Everyone's had a good time. People got up. But let's just party. <laughs> <laughs> Find out more about base jumping at channel4.com forward slash talk. Rob and John are there poised to answer your questions. Cutting Edge is back next Tuesday.